everyone, Amarathi here, and today we are going to be looking at the EQ Werebear. That's right, the build that dominated the 8.1 meta is back with a vengeance and looking about a hundred times cooler. This time you'll be crashing down lightning, upheaving the earth and shifting the foundations with this high damage and high mobility setup. The EQ Werebear has to be one of the flashiest and funnest builds I've played, but it's also the number one build that I'll be recommending to new players to the game. You can level with the build with some Leap Slam action, swap to the EQ version when you get your easily attainable Border's Wrath, and then when the build is ready to step up at another level, you can get a legendary Border's Wrath with added base melee crit chance. Uh, it's also super tanky with minimal investment, and you'll have some terrific monolith clear speeds thanks to being able to rampage around the battlefield. As always, build planners are below. I have a level 50 planner that you can work towards if you're leveling, a basic and powered monolith setup once you actually have your Boulder's Wrath, and then a late game setup when you attain your legendary Boulder's Wrath. If you'd like to see me playing this build, please join me on twitch.tv forward slash Amarathi, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps out the chat. The key item that you'll be working towards is the Baldur's Wrath, as it allows you to proc your Earthquake on a non-channeled movement skill every 5 seconds. Luckily it's fairly easy to attain from your Spirits of Fire timeline, it's about a 50% chance from the boss there. Uh, we'll be proccing that Earthquake off Mole, and with a little bit of cooldown reduction, we should be able to get our Mole fairly close to a 2.5 second cooldown, allowing us to proc Earthquake on every second more. EQ will be our hardest hitting ability. Skill naturally has a 300% added damage scaling, and plenty of access to large more damage multipliers such as Shadowquake. And thanks to the Druid changes, we are now able to run the expensive Seismic Tide node again. We'll also be taking the Concussion and Staggering Force nodes to greatly increase our stun chance of Earthquake and allow us to interrupt those pesky bosses. However, unlike the previous EQ Werebear build, we will be actually getting a substantial amount of our damage from Mole. Insatiable in the Werebear tree gives us 8% base crit and a generic 200% increased crit chance while in Werebear form. Bringer of Storms is going to convert all our base and added damage to lightning so we can make use of elemental damage and lightning penetration. And most importantly, taking the Skullcrusher node gives Mole the benefits from the Fury Leap tree. Fury Leap is great for giving Mole more damage and CDR, but one of the real neat benefits is that we can run gravity to pull enemies into our Earthquake, similar to a Leap Quake Barbarian from Diablo 3. To support this, we'll be taking max points in Crater within the Fury Leap and Territorial within the Werebear Tree to increase the area of the Maw. Our Rage will be managed through specking to Spring and Form and taking the Garden of Rage node. This will apply to the Vines we can summon through Fury Leap thanks to Rise. Spring and Form can also give us a small defensive benefit through taking the Thorn Shield nodes like a Terra's Bulwark when combined with the Druid passive Thicket of Thorns. Finally, we'll be running Summon Spriggan for the base crit chance thanks to Aura of Retribution. If you're lucky enough to get a Boulder's Wrath with melee crit chance on it, you can drop this for upheaval for more damage and a guaranteed chill application to support EQ's Shadowquake node. Check the endgame planner for my recommended upheaval setup. For items, we will want to include a Wings of Agentus because of our high uptime moving around, as well as it giving damage and a skill level to Earthquake. A low Gisunga is also a really good inclusion for the base crit and leech while having all the benefits of being a bone amulet. For offensive stats we'll be focusing on plus level of Earthquake, crit multiplier while transform, crit chance such that you can get your Earthquake to 100% crit chance, and strength. The defensive stats focus on increased and hybrid health, 100% critical strike avoidance, increased bore effect from your idols, Resistance is above 65%, increased armor, and vitality and added health. To convert your current existing uniques into legendary, you want to focus on getting melee crit chance on your Boulder's Wrath, resistances or crit multiplier on your Logi's Hunger, and increased health on your Wings of Argentus. 
if you were able to find either a Suleron Step of Rule of Simone with at least three legendary potential on them, they could be included in the build. Well, there you go, guys. That is the build in its entirety. If you've got any further questions, remember you can hit me up on the comments below or reach out to me at twitch.tv forward slash Amarathi. See you guys next time.